Hello everyone and welcome to my Coronation Street official. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Roy Cropper's future on Coronation Street remains uncertain as he once again puts himself in the picture for Lauren Bolton's alleged murder. Troubled character. Lauren went missing some weeks ago. While we haven't seen her body yet, D.S. Swain believes she was murdered based on the blood found in her flat and the odd way she disappeared into thin air. After meeting with Bobby, D.S. Swain and Craig's inquiry took them to the cafe where they spoke with Roy. The beloved character revealed the truth and claimed he cleaned Lauren's flat to help Evelyn Maureen Lippman, but he forgot to realize that not everyone, particularly Swain, would trust him. Following his detention, Roy informs Nina, Molly Gallagher, and Yasmin, Shelley King, in the cafe that he has been summoned to return to the police station to be interviewed, unaware that an internet sleuth is listening in. Meanwhile, after hearing David and Shona suggest that Lauren's father's far-right group may be involved, Max decides to pay Reese a discreet visit in prison. Back in the cafe, Roy is alone except for two suspicious individuals sitting at a table. When one of them stands up and shuts the door, Roy realizes he is in danger. Nina is horrified when she reads about some sleuths who have been digging at the Bat Roost site, hoping to unearth proof linking Roy to Lauren's death. Roy drives to the Roost site, shovels and bin bags in tow, thinking everything is fine. When he returns, Swain is ready to take him to the station. Poor Roy continues to make matters worse for himself when, later, at Lauren's vigil, he confronts the crows and speaks warmly of her. Moments later, a group of guys make derogatory remarks and begin filming him with their phones. As things spiral out of control, Evelyn, Carla, Allison King, and Nana advise Roy to maintain a low profile until the authorities figure out what happened to Lauren and who killed her. Coronation Street is reportedly in a crisis with the resignation of producer Ian McLeod after six years. We reported in January that McLeod was taking over as executive producer of both Corey and another ITV drama Emmerdale following the resignation of their own EP, Jane Hudson. During his stint on the show, he oversaw award-winning stories such as the acid assault on Ryan Connor, Ryan Prescott, and Jeff Metcalf's Ian Bartholomew, manipulative, controlling wife Yasmin, Shelley King. Recent episodes have focused on Lauren Bolton's, Kate Fitton, disappearance and the impact Peter Barlow's, Chris Gascoigne, leaving has had on son Simon, Alex Bain. In the meanwhile, his wife, assistant producer Verity McLeod, is expected to take over. According to a source, ITB has approached several television executives who are now working on other serial dramas or have previously overseen major shows, but none are interested in taking on the project. One of the things that put people off was the fact that you'd be reporting to Ayn while having his wife as your deputy, they said. It's a McLeod sandwich that no one wants to be in the center of, and it's now becoming an even bigger issue for ITV. It should be emphasized, however, that appointing a new producer is always a lengthy procedure and that throughout the soap's first three decades, the post was frequently flexible and shared among numerous people who would assume the lead for much shorter periods of time. From 1976 to 1989, legendary manager Bill Podmore held the role for eight different spells. Since 2013, a line of succession from Emmerdale has seen both Stuart Blackburn and Kate Oates go across the Pennines to take over, but with Kate Brooks and Laura Shaw still in their current positions, it is unlikely on this occasion. The announcement comes just days after William Roach, who has played street mainstay Ken Barlow since the first episode in 1960, discussed how the program needs to alter to appeal to new audiences. The challenge the producers have is you've got an older age that's getting older, a younger generation that's coming in, and you've got to keep appealing to the younger generation, which isn't easy, he told a fan in a personalized cameo video. If it had continued how it was, it would have become a dinosaur and died long ago. It has to be an organic process, a live thing that attracts young people. Samia Longchamban from Coronation Street has sent a sweet message after spending the weekend with her husband for the first time since Christmas. The Maria Connor actor is married to Sylvain Longchamban, best known as a professional skater on they ITV's on skating show in 2013 and married in 2016. Samia has two children, 
Freya, who she shares with her ex-husband Matt Smith, and Ives Joseph, Sylvain's kid. Recently, the actress shared a wonderful photo on Instagram. Samia and Sylvain can be seen smiling at the camera as they hug and sit on their sofa. In the caption, Samia wrote, First weekend back home for its slum champion since Christmas. As much as I enjoy watching you skate on TV at Dancing Goddess, watching Tig with you next to me on our sofa is hashtag home sweet home. Sylvian partnered with Roxy Shahidi, who plays Leela Harding in Emmerdale, on the most recent season of Dancing on Ice. In Coronation Street, Samia is involved in a deep and emotional plotline with Charlie Renshaw, who plays Maria's son Liam Connor. After months of bullying, a devastated Liam began exploring suicide options. Fortunately, Maria and Gary, Mikey North, found Liam before anything happened, and he is now opening up about his ordeal and getting therapy. Samia Longchamin told us, Charlie's just been incredible. He's just 14. And it's amazing because he's been playing Liam since he was three. So we have a really tight friendship, and I've known him pretty much his entire life, which makes those scenes both easier and more difficult because we have an emotional connection to each other. It's not a great thing to think about, let alone have to act and go through it, she continued. Your body has no idea that we're making ourselves cry, and it's draining because your body is unaware that the situation you are crying about is not real. So Charlie and I have had days where we've spent the entire day crying to each other. We're fatigued by the end of the day. Kim Marsh, a Coronation Street star and television presenter, has offered a tragic update following the passing of her father. Kim, who is best known for her role as Michelle Connor in the ITV serial, frequently co-hosts BBC One's Morning Live with Gavin Jones. There, she writes candidly and honestly about her father, David, who died on January 12 following a long fight with prostate cancer. It is with great sadness that we announce the death of David Marsh, stated the statement at the time. A much-loved husband, father, grandfather, great-grandfather, and friend to many, David died peacefully at home on Friday, surrounded by his family. We are very heartbroken and request privacy during this really difficult time. Cam celebrated David's birthday on Instagram over the weekend, posting a wonderful photo of herself and him. Happy birthday, Daddy. First one without you. I cannot bear it. She wrote, I missed you so much. The Waterloo Road actress received numerous nice and empathetic words in the comments section from her fans and friends. Happy birthday, Dave. Have a drink up there for us. Fleur East, a TV personality, added XXS, while former Cory star Bhavna Limbakia simply tweeted sending love. Backslash Kime had an emotional appearance on Morning Live in November, discussing her father's sickness. During the pre-recorded video, Kim stated, I wouldn't want to watch anyone else go through this. I am more emotional than my father. He is unbelievably strong. Thanks for watching if you like this video, so please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any updates.